let me start off by saying I love DaVinci Resolve, but there's been one thing that's been really bugging me. But we found a fix for it. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, as I said in my intro, and you can tell by the title, I love DaVinci Resolve and I love the color managed workflow. The one thing that's been bugging me ever since I switched over from Final Cut is the fusion colors. And there's a lot of technical reasons about why fusions colors are different. I'll put some links to some great videos below, but basically fusion doesn't understand a color managed workflow. It understands a linear workflow. So I tested some various fixes and workarounds throughout the last few months. Some work great on white, some work great on colors, but they're just a pain. And I finally found the easiest way to fix fusion, at least for me. So let's get into it. All right, everybody. So here we are on DaVinci Resolve. And if you notice my mouse cursor, I made blue and yellow, I made it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. As you see on the timeline, we have a basic text, which looks white. And then we have a fusion text box, which is supposed to be white, as you see here, but it looks kind of gray. And the reason it does that is because fusion expects linear color space. It doesn't understand like DaVinci wide, wide gamut, and it doesn't understand other color spaces. The basic text on the other hand is white, because it doesn't care about color space. It's just basic text. It's not being transformed or color transformed into anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go up here to DaVinci Resolve Preferences. We're gonna make sure we're in System and we're gonna go to General. Now, because I'm on a Mac, I wanna use my Mac color profiles and I'm gonna to convert to 709 to 709-A. I'll put a link in the description that explains why this is the best for a Mac OS. So we wanna make sure that is set first, and it is. And the next thing we wanna do is go down here to the bottom right corner and check our project settings. And we're gonna go over to color management. So as you see here, we're on DaVinci YRGB color manage, wide gamut, rec 709-A for the output color space. Again, this is a Mac. I'll put a link in the description to a great video that explains why this is the best output color space for a Mac. What we wanna do is see exactly what these settings are so we can fix the fusion color problem. And the easiest way to do that is go to the color processing mode and go to custom. Now, without explaining all this, the one thing we wanna really look at is the timeline working luminance right here, HDR 4000. That's gonna make a difference when we do some corrections in the future and our output color space. So we wanna make sure we remember these, are we gonna do a screenshot or anything else? Instead of leaving this in custom, I'm just gonna cancel. And if we go back in, you can see it went back to my defaults. Just remember those settings in custom, it will make a difference. So as you see here, you know we definitely have the two basic effects. The colors are incorrect. If I go over to one of my old intros, you can see this is supposed to be white, and again, it's gray. So how do we fix this? So let's go over to the Fusion page. And you do that by clicking down here at the bottom for Fusion. And we'll highlight one of the texts or both of them. It, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the Fusion text box since that's what we want to fix. All right, now that we're over here in Fusion, here we are in a basic Fusion page. We have our text box and our media out. First thing we want to do is come over here to the Fusion and I'm just gonna click so nothing's selected. I'm gonna hit shift spacebar, hit color space transform and add. And there we have a color space transform. The next thing I wanna do is add another color space transform. So we'll go ahead and hit shift space and add. We could of course do the copy and paste and all of that good stuff, but I just wanna show that we're doing two color space transforms. And the reason we're doing this is because we're in wide gamut color space and we want fusion to get out of that wide gamut color space back to our output and then back to a linear color space because that's what fusion understands. 
I, I, I hope that makes sense. I'll do a link to another great video that explains this in great detail because I am by far not an expert. So let's go ahead and select the first color space transform. We'll go up here to our inspector. And if you see this and it's like this, you just click on the color space transform. Or if you can't see it at all, you just click on your inspector. First thing we're gonna do is our input color space. But this is kind of confusing. We want what we were outputting in our clip. So we were actually outputting Rec 709 and our input gamma was Rec 709A. If you remember from looking at that previous screen under the preferences, we were under a Rec 709 output gamma. So that's what we want for our, our, our input. So we were gonna take fusion that was outputted at 709, and we're saying, yep, that's how we're inputting it into this color space transform because that's what is coming out of the clip. And the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure our tone mapping method is DaVinci because we were using DaVinci wide gamut. And here's where we want to pay attention to the custom max output, which was that luminance value. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that this max output in nits is 4,000 to match our previous setting in our preferences. And of course I can't type. There we go, 4,000. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure we apply an inverse OOTF. Now OOTF stands for Opto Optical Transfer Function, which is beyond the technical scope of this video, but I'll put another link into a great video that explains this in great detail. So that's our first color space transform. You would think you could change your output gamma here, but you can't because you want to complete the color space transform and then go into a linear. So on our second color space transform, we're going to basically mark out everything except for output gamma. And we want this to linear because that's what Fusion expects. So we're going to select linear. And we're going to make sure the rest of this stuff is none and unchecked. That's it. So we have two color space transformations. Now let's go ahead and stick these into our Fusion. Let's, you know, cut off the connection from the text box to the media out. And we're just going to connect all these. All right, let me fix this a little bit. Now, when we go back to our edit page, you can see we're white again. And we can change this to green. And it looks green. Let's go ahead and go up to the basic and see if we turn this to green. They look the same. They look green. So with this method, it doesn't matter what color you select. It'll be the correct color. So let's go back to the Fusion page. And you're like, okay, that's great. Now, how can I make this simple? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight these, right click, and we're going to group them. Okay. So here's our group. Now we're going to output this into a macro and an effect. So what you're going to do is right click, settings, save as. I'm just going to say this to my desktop for now, and I'm going to call it color fix. You can call it whatever you want. All right. So after everything's done, we're going to go up here to effects and we're going to come down here to LUTs. And we're going to go up here to the little triple dots and we're going to hit show folder. Now we're not going to do any LUTs. It's just a way of getting to where we need to go. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to macros and you can see where I put my fusion color fix setting. That's what I called it before. But if you want, you can drag and drop the file we just made from your desktop. So here is my desktop folder. We'll just get this color fix setting and we're going to hold the option key because we want to copy it, not move it. And there we go. We have our color fix in our macros. 
The next thing we want to do is go over here to templates, edit, and effects. All right, now we're going to get the color fix setting and drag and drop it over into the effects and hold the option so it's copied. And there you go. So let's go ahead and get out of all this, close it, close our effects, and go back here to our edit page. Now that everything's fixed, what we can do is go over here to our clip that is kind of screwed up. Go over here to effects, go over here to where it says color fix and just drag and drop it onto the clip. Boom. There you go. It's fixed and it's there permanently. So let me select the fusion text box and we'll go over here to fusion. Let me go ahead and delete this group one. The other way to get this to work is let's go ahead and break this line. And we're going to hit shift space again and do color fix. And there it is right there. We're going to add it. And we'll connect them here real quick and go back to our edit page. And there you go. Everything is nice. We'll change this to white so you make sure the colors match and they do. Between the effect and the macro, this is an easy fix and it'll be there from now until you delete it. I hope this helped you. Let's go ahead and get out of it. All right, everybody. So what do you think of this quick and easy fix for fusion colors, either it be an effect or a macro? Personally, I love this fix for fusion colors. It's a quick drag and drop in fusion or a quick effect drop in your timeline. I just absolutely love it. And by far, to me, this is the easiest, easiest fix to the fusion colors, unless Blackmagic actually fixes this in the future where fusion can understand a color managed workflow, that would be great. But until then, this is the best fix in my opinion. So all I wanted to say was thank you everybody for watching and for listening. I greatly appreciate it. Have a great day or night, everybody. Happy shooting. Thank you. Bye.